Hey everybody, welcome back to Bottom Shelf Bar. That's Paul. That's Connor. And tonight we're trying something totally new to me, which Paul is going to explain. So this is cognac, um, which is brandy that is made from grapes and bottled in the cognac region of France, similar to Champagne. How You know, it's only Champagne if it's from Champagne, France. Um, cognac also undergoes a special two-step distillation process um, that many claim make it extremely smooth. Um, fun fact, we're not going to drink it this way tonight because we're Americans, but the way French people drink it, um, they typically drink it in a very tall glass over ice with juice, soda, kind of like all kinds of different things. Um, this is not bottom shelf. <laughs> not really. <laughs> um, this is done by uh, request of one of my very best friends. Um, so this is about 25 bucks a bottle. Uh, Courvoisier, Hennessy, um, Remy Martin, and Martel are the four brands of cognac that sell the most uh, throughout the world. They corner 90% of the cognac market. So this is one of like the biggest cognacs in the world. And Courvoisier specifically has a really um, celebrated tradition because it's probably... As far as I'm aware, one of, if not the oldest brand of cognac that exists today. So, Courvoisier is pretty special. They call themselves Le Cognac de Napoleon, or Napoleon's Cognac, because supposedly when he got exiled to Malta, he took like a hundred casks of this stuff with him. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cognac's a really special spirit. Um, everyone says it's smooth, so... Now we're going to put it through the bottom shelf bar. <laughs> That's right. Put it through its bottom shelf paces. <laughs> Let's have shots. <laughs> Worth noting that uh, the vast majority of human beings on the planet Earth cannot differentiate brandy from whiskey, so we'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that pretty much tastes like whiskey, I'm not going to lie. Sweet, though. It is sweet. I see what they're talking about. Uh, Courvoisier is like... There's a little grape in there. Well regarded as like a, a really good crowd-pleasing cognac. Um, it's known to have notes of vanilla and honey, um, which are definitely present. Um, I feel like the grape is a little bit noticeable. Um, yeah. I get a lot of vanilla up front and then either because my brain knows that there's grape involved in this or because it actually tastes like it, I get some like... <clears throat> almost like grape skin taste. Mm -hmm. Now see, if, if I remember correctly, which I might not, because my uh, my geology of France is a little is a little uh, shaky compared to what it once was, um, I believe the Cognac region is pretty close to the Champagne region of France, meaning that I, I believe that they have a fairly similarly um, like slightly sweet white grape. Um, which I might, I might be wrong about, but I believe cognac is exclusively distilled from white wine. So there's definitely like, like more of a, more of like a sweetness and a citrusy accent I feel that than like a straight whiskey would be. But anyways, that's enough about the actual fancy, interesting parts about cognac. Because for the rest of this, we're just putting it through its bottom shelf paces. Um, that shot was smooth, burned a little bit, but it's, very drinkable yeah that was good um as it should be for uh, the 25 dollars spirit yeah but uh we're gonna do a bottom shelf bar classic game now <laughs> <laughs> the drill there's three cups what could we do with them probably unstack them we're gonna try uh three two one go see this is the same <laughs> the same problem we had before a photo finish but i was slightly ahead yeah all right, we're gonna start making cocktails with this now. With cognac, a cocktail, if you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a sidecar. It's got one and two thirds ounce cognac, uh, one ounce triple sec. Although it's the traditional sidecar is Cointreau, Cointreau is just really expensive, and half ounce lemon juice. Yeah. Do I look like a person who buys Cointreau? I don't think I do. Cointreau is expensive, so let's try a sidecar. This is widely regarded as one of the most sophisticated cocktails in the world. Very bottom shelf of us. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not my favorite thing I've ever had, but I get Ooh. it. 
It evolves. The oak comes through a lot. It does. Yeah. In a good way, but a lot. I have to say, and it's because we mostly drink actual bottom shelf, you know, cheap shit. But this has an actual evolution. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is, like, actually good. <laughs> Compared to everything else we drink, this is, like... A, a, um, a cut above, as they might say. Yeah. It's a really interesting cocktail, and obviously this cognac works very well in it, as it sh as it should. Um, yeah, the th all three components work together to create something that is not really like you would picture from like two citrusy things and a cognac. But yeah, it's an interesting cocktail. I didn't particularly care for my first sip of it, but the more you drink it, the more you go, yeah. That I can see how this would be a sophisticated cocktail. Mm -hmm. I almost feel like, like the like the most prevalent tasting note. I almost feel like it's like a sandalwood, or like a, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> not really. Like it's modulated by the citrus. Yeah, I like it. This is good. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's really good. It's different from what I normally drink, though. I will say that. Yeah, this is not something that I have ever experienced before, but. I like it a lot. Yeah. It's good. That being said, if you were to order, you know, if you were to order a sidecar in a bar, I would imagine chances are it would just be a brandy, um, unless you're at like a like a higher class, like cocktail lounge or something. Or a bourbon. That's um, a very common substitute. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's one of those things. Uh, cognac is brandy, but not all brandy is cognac by definition, so... I know I'm drinking this slowly, it's because I actually enjoy it. Yeah, normally we're just downing stuff, but we're gonna cut to the game now. That's right. Unstacking cups, three, two, one, go. It's time for a new strategy. It almost worked. It did work. There we go. All right, well, we're gonna make another drink. Indeed, it has a funny name. <laughs> That's all I remember right now. <laughs> All right, this is a horse's neck. <laughs> I know it doesn't look like it, but it's that's what it's called. A uh, horse's neck is one and three quarters ounce of cognac with four ounces of ginger ale and one dash of bitters. Um, what's really interesting about the horse's neck, though, and I'm I'm glad that we're drinking this. Uh, cognac and ginger ale is one of the like most frequent ways that cognac is drank. Um, in fact, uh, Remy Martin. One of the one of the brands that you know is is massive for cognac. Uh, Remy Martin, the the person when he served cognac, typically served it with ginger ale and offered his patrons a choice between domestic and imported ginger ale. So this is like a whole, like ginger ale and cognac is like a whole thing. Let's try it. Cheers. I'm excited. This smells good. That's just the Angostura though. Yeah, there's a lot of bitter smell on here. There's a bit, there's a bit going on there. Mm -hmm. There's something going on there. That's very good. We're using Fever Tree ginger ale. Um, when it comes to ginger products, I swear by Fever Tree for my mixed drinks. I think it's the highest quality that you can get on a budget. Catch uh, me using Canada Dry. <laughs> can't use that for ginger beer though. Although, not gonna lie, extra side tip for y'all out there. The bold Canada Dry flavor is like the closest you can get to super cheap ginger beer for stuff like Moscow Mules. Pro tip. Anyway, this is, a this is another pretty good cocktail. I'm enjoying this. Yeah, I I like this a lot. There's complexity. There is. The combination of bitters and cognac is really good. Like it adds a lot of depth, I think, to the cognac. Always remember to put bitters in your drinks. You might think that, you know, how much can one dash of bitters really do? But the answer is it can either make it really good or fucking ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you add too much, if you add bitters to a drink that doesn't need it or add too much bitters to a drink, it's it's done. Yeah. Anyways, another great way to use your cognac or, or brandy. I, I would assume you can substitute. Yeah, anything you can make with cognac, you can make with brandy. Um, by definition, this is a subset of brandy. Um, that being said, I haven't had very... I've had, like, one other brandy in recent memory, 
and it was all right at best. Um, I only used it as a substitute for whiskey in, in cocktails. It wasn't that good. Um, this is a cut above that. I don't know if that's true of all cognac, um, but it's, it's real good. Yeah. I would say, to me, this is like... I was going to make a comparison to it, but it was a stupid comparison. Um, again, a little bit difficult to describe effectively. There's like a little bit of that aromatic note from the bitters, which, you know, just have all the flavor. The ginger ale blends in quite a bit, and the brandy is, you know, it's on display. Yeah, it's hard to, it is hard to describe. I feel like there's like... Like you get a little bit of the of like a like grape skin note and like like a woody note, accented by the ginger and angostura. It's kind of like how like an oud wood smells compared to a sandalwood. How oud wood is like a spicier version almost. Um, I'm really into scented things <laughs> <laughs> tonight on wood with all. <laughs> uh, dude, oud oud wood. Great uh, cologne scent. Fun fact: it never. Mind. If it's not from the Cologne region of France, it's just sparkling body spray. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we got games to play. Yeah. All right, cup unstacking, where the real competition is who gets the first one pulled out first and then restacks it so they can pull out <laughs> the last one. Because we haven't figured out how to do this game right. Okay, okay. Three, two, one, go. My pyramid or stack just straight up fell over. <laughs> Wait, what are you doing? Sir! Doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm trying to cheat because I'm kind of drunk. <laughs> I'm also kind of drunk. It's time for the last call. Which, which is, is going to be real weird. It's going to be super strange. <laughs> we'll explain. <laughs> It's the last call. It's probably going to be the most interesting last call that we've ever had. And whether that's good or bad remains to be seen. But this has three different kinds of soju, which are Jinro 24, Jinro Chummy Sul, and then their grapefruit flavor, as well as lemon juice, simple syrup, ginger ale, Corvoisier Cognac, bitters, and triple sec. Which is just the weirdest combination. It's also weird because, uh... It's, I just feel like it's weird anytime we have a last call and there's like not there's there's a liquor in there that's not bottom shelf which just cognac is is not <laughs> yeah it's just not we're just doing what we want at this point but we're gonna take a sip of this before we chug it because it's just so strange just to see what it tastes like we want to see what it's like I'm not gonna lie it's really good <laughs> it's really good wow all right chug time I kind of don't want to chug it, it's tasty. Well, you have to, that's the rules. It's like citrusy and also complex and smoky, like. Yeah, man. That was pretty good. Wow. That you was- You know what, no. That was really good. That was really <laughs> good. You, hear, you heard it here first, folks. If you want a really good mixed drink, just use <laughs> Equal parts, Jinro 24, Jinro Shamisul, Jinro... Etc, et cetera. Et cetera. <laughs> I mean, put, you know, just put soju in things, I guess. And also cognac. Also cognac. The people of France love, apparently, according to all the sources I've read, love drinking cognac in just all sorts of stuff. Like, just with different sodas, with different fruit juices, like... That was really good. That was good. I... As stupid as it should be, there was like nothing that didn't fit in that cocktail. The ginger worked well, the citrus flavors worked well, the cognac worked well. Uh, it was it was yeah. like not too sweet. I mean, there's a little bit of simple syrup in there, but yeah. But along with the soju and you, the cognac and you the, could do without the simple, to be honest. Yeah, honestly, I feel like the simple didn't really add anything there. And, um, uh, I mean, obvi okay, it's the last call. Why are we critiquing it? Yeah. It had to be in there. Well, because we're because it's good. <laughs> it is really good. Oh. <laughs> it's um, so easy. So yeah, if you're looking for weird mixed drinks to impress your friends, or maybe even like pitcher drinks, 
freaking cognac or brandy and soju. It's, it'll take <laughs> and triple sec. It'll take you on a world journey. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm going to give Corvoisier cognac a 5 out of 5 on the oh, bottom shelf scale. Yeah, easy. It just doesn't belong on the bottom shelf scale. It's so much better. Uh, it was worth it. <laughs> Super worth it. Uh, and this is going to be used to make some delicious steak au poivre, so... Sure, if you know what that is, <laughs> imagine it in your head. We have to unstack cups one last time, and then we'll sign off. One more. All right. Well, one last time. Here we go. Three, two, one. God dang it. There we go. I got it. I... This is really who can put <laughs> the cups back on top the fastest. Um. Anyways, uh... The game doesn't matter. I don't remember who won. No, me neither. Um, <laughs> I think we're both feeling pretty good right now, if you know oh, what yeah. I mean. The soju and the cognac uh, combined. What a The cognac. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling pretty cognac it's a lot. It's right a lot. now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot of alcohol. Um, yeah, we're good. We had a fun time recording this and uh, the last episode with Soju, so check that out if you haven't. This has been Bottom Shelf Bar. I'm Connor. I'm Paul. And we will see you next time with even more random stuff to drink, so stay tuned. The French know how to make good drinks. Sure. <laughs> Peace. God, I love the smell of those bitters so much. If I could have a candle that was Angostura scented, fuck yeah, dude. <laughs>